How's it going everyone? In this video I'm going to be showing you my workflow for getting 2D anime style effects in Blender. Primarily this is used for getting explosions or like magical effects, stuff like that, but it can be used for a lot of different things. In this video we are going to make a puffy cloudy explosion with uh, several layers, about four layers of different colors sort of peeling back as it, uh, as it grows and expands. So this technique is purely um, modifier based and it's all mesh manipulation. It's not actually rendering any textures within cycles or EV or anything like that. It's just changing the shape of the object and layering multiple objects over each other to create the different uh, layers of the explosion. We're going to start with our default cube here. We're going to add about five layers of uh, subdivision and we're also going to add in a couple of vertex groups. One of them is going to be our main vertex group, which we'll, we will call texture. This is, uh, we're going to use this to convert a texture into vertex group weight. And this will be the main driver behind this technique. But we're also going to add in a couple other mod or a couple other vertex groups. Only one of them is going to be used to achieve our final result. The other one we won't actually end up needing. Now here we are adding our vertex weight edit modifier. This will allow us to assign or this will allow us to manipulate the weights of a vertex group and we can use a texture mask to mask over that change. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to invert the influence but only where the texture mask will allow it. So this will essentially give us a texture mask in vertex weights. And I'm going to use a clouds texture with the uh, Vero uh, Veronoi F1 setting. It's uh, the one that I prefer you can use any texture really um, to control the weights, but I, I just prefer this one. And I also added an empty into the scene. The, the purpose for this is that we're going to use it to control the, uh, it's going to be used as the texture coordinate for the vertex weight edit. So we can move the empty around, scale it up, rotate it, do whatever you want, and it will actually control the shape of the texture on the object. And now you can see that we are assigning uh, a value of 1 for all of the weight groups uh, and the entire cube. Now you can see that we are switching the falloff type to custom curve and reversing the curve in order to get the correct texture influence on the vertex group. Alright, so now that we have our texture set up, Correctly, what we're going to do is we're going to add in our displace modifiers. So we're going to add in two displace modifiers, and you don't have to do this, but uh, I'm going to add another level of uh, subsurf in between the two modifiers. So normally you would think to uh, use a texture to control the displace, but the problem with that is as soon as the first displace modifier uh, displace the displaces the geometry the next one will not have the exact same coordinates or exact same displacement amount even if you 
uh, use the same texture because it's based off of the, the location in the, the texture space. So what we're going to do is instead use the texture vertex group to control the displacement. So you can see that we put the texture in there and it controls how much it's being displaced and it's if you go in here it looks just like the texture. It's using the texture's values for the amount of displacement. And the reason we put a second one, a second displacement modifier on there, is because that it gives it a sort of uh, bubbling effect. More, It's much more cloudy and organic looking in my opinion. I, you don't have to do this, but I think it, it looks really nice. Alright, and now that that's set up, we're going to add in a, another vertex weight edit a mask modifier and a smooth modifier. So now if I set the mask modifier to the texture you notice that it doesn't do anything. It's not actually masking the geometry right now. That's because the way the mask modifier works is it only removes geometry that is not assigned to the selected vertex group. Right now everything is assigned. Even if it's like a really low weight it's assigned to the vertex group. So what we're going to do with this vertex weight edit is we're going to use the group remove threshold to remove uh, vertices from the, the weight group based on their weights. So anything below the threshold is going to get removed and therefore masked out. So we set the vertex group to texture and you can see that as we uh, as we increase the threshold, parts of the geometry are getting removed. And now, right now, it's going the opposite of what I want. I actually wanted to uh, go towards the inside of the explosion. So I'm going to go down here and reverse the influence of the mask. So that is the. This is really the basics of this technique is we're going to have about three or four of these objects all with a different remove threshold so that you get a layered effect and you get the different colors of the explosion sort of like peeling back as it grows and expands. Now I'm going to go down here and add and change the smooth from a factor of 0.5 to 1 and then put in about 25 repetitions and you can see that that gets rid of the jaggedness of the uh, quad topology. Like, Without it, it's really jagged right here. And then once you add it in, it makes it much more organic and uh, sort of like a... It looks much more like the texture is actually supposed to be. And you can experiment with how much smoothing to put on there, but I usually set around 25, 35, something like that. So this object is actually the center of uh, the effect, so we're not actually going to be masking this one, but it's a good idea to set up the mask on this one so that now that we are going to duplicate it, it, it the other layers will have the, the correct modifiers set up. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to duplicate it to make the next layer, change it to a different one. Go back to the first and I'm going to remove the mask and the vertex weight at the uh, remove threshold one. All right, so now that we have multiple meshes, you can see that the they're occupying the same space and they're actually overlapping and it's not going to render well this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another displace modifier and set it to a low value of like 0.1. And we'll just push it off the surface just a little bit to where that you can see both meshes when they're rendering. Now you can use the empty and play around with it, see the different effects. And we'll continue this, add another one, give it a, give it a darker orange. And for this one, we're going to actually take the threshold even farther down and then bring the strength up. Oops. 
So now we're at, we have the layers of the explosion. And you can add as many layers as you want. Just keep changing the threshold and uh, displacing it out. And now I'm going to add one more layer. In my original, I had four layers of explosions. Uh, yeah, why is it not looking good? And the inside, we're going to turn to a black, or just above a black, not fully black. With this technique, you can change up the um, some of the orders of the modifiers. Like you can take this uh, displace that is creating the layering effect and actually move it above the the smooth if you want, even above the mask. And I think that actually gives better results. Yeah, I think that's a little bit more consistent. Alright, so real quick, I'm going to set up uh, a control empty for the, the masking threshold. So I'm going to go in here, add driver, switch it over to the drivers, turn it to, uh, I'll name this empty. Uh, Masking threshold. And the, other, <clears throat> and the other empty, I'm going to name texture control. And I'm going to set it to the Y scale and world space and just set it to the uh, variable. Now I'm going to copy the driver and I'm going to paste it onto the others. And as you can see, right now they all have the same threshold, so we have to tweak the other ones. Um, so we want the orange to have the least. So we're going to put it in the, my, uh, I'm going to set to variable minus 0 0.2 or 0.15. The other one to minus point oh seven five, and now you can see as you scale it up, it has that layering effect. And you can move this around to control the texture, and this is the basics of how I animated it moving these things around, changing the masking threshold. Alright, so right now this is the basics of the workflow, but we can make it better. We can uh, add in a second layer of uh, texture to give it even more detail, which is what I did in the original. So I'm going to close down all these modifiers. Actually, I'm going to actually hide these for right now. 
because of the way this works with the multiple objects, it's kind of a little bit tedious to set up because you have to go back and forth between them all and change each one individually. So it's best to have the first object set up and then duplicate it and set up the others. So you'd uh, as little repetition as possible. And I'm gonna name the objects now. All right, so what we want to do is add in another texture weight edit. Or actually, I'm not going to add in, I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to set this one to the high detail for a text group. And I'm going to change the empty to this new one that I'm going to name high detail control. And now if we go into what, look at that one. I'm going to scale it down because I want it a little bit smaller. <clears throat> so what we're going to do with this one is we're going to add in a vertex weight mix modifier, put it above the masking threshold. So that way it's not affecting the displace modifiers. And we're going to set it to texture for vertex group A. And then high detail to vertex group B, or vertex group B to high detail. I'm going to set it to all of them, and we're going to subtract it. So the idea here is that we got the texture, or maybe we should add it, I think. Yeah, so you set it to add, and that's going to remove additional uh, additional geometry from uh, with the mask I'll wait for it. it's gonna add it um, or take away like these small circles away from the edge so it gives a little bit more uh, detailed of a masking we can make it even smaller yeah see that's pretty nice this is where adding another even another level of subsurf after the last displace can help out because it's the amount of detail you get is based on the amount of subsurf basically. But it gets pretty slow. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch that to just one level of subsurf. For rendering you can set it up. By making this one smaller, we get more uh, clouds basically. All right, so now I'm going to bring these back and I'm going to copy their drivers and delete them because I don't what I want to do is duplicate this one and then change the driver out of the threshold make this second layer and same thing for this one And we need to change the displace amount. There we go. We got the four layers of displace, or four layers of the explosion. Copy this and I'm going to take it into Blender uh, 2.8 version. Here is the explosion in Blender 
this is an Eevee. I'm using it for the real-time bloom effect because it makes it look so much nicer. And you can see that I altered the center core to have a like a rim light with the layer weight node as opposed to just this uh, pure blown out one. It, it, you can do it really either way. But you can see that it, it works as expected. It peels back. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Alright, to summarize, first we start with our base object, in this case it is a subdivided cube. Then we convert a texture to vertex weight groups. Then we use that to displace the model. And we also use that to mask away the model. And then we duplicate the object for the amount of color layers we need, masking each one at a different threshold. So the modifier stack looks like this. We got the base model modifiers. Then we have our vertex weight edit, which turns a texture into a weight group. And then we displace the model with the weight group. Then we have our animation modifiers. Then we have a small displacement modifier to create separation between the layers. And then we have our mask threshold and mask modifier, followed lastly with a smooth modifier to smooth out the jagged edges of the model. All right, so that is the end of the tutorial. Um, that is the basics of my workflow that I have currently developed. It's still, uh, I'm still trying to refine and make it easier to uh, to change stuff after the fact because right now you have to go through and change all four objects or however many objects you have so I want to make that a little bit easier to navigate not as tedious and uh, when I have a update for it I will make another video so if you want to see that just uh, subscribe to the channel or follow me on Twitter or whatever you'll I'll uh, notify when I have that uh, ready to go So if you are wanting to get your hands on these files, I have uh, six different files, all with uh, this similar effect, except for one of them doesn't actually use this uh, workflow. But the other five, they all use this. Uh, the ones that you're seeing right now, they those files are gonna be available on Gumroad for $3. Uh, all that money will go towards uh, supporting this channel and uh, allowing me to make more tutorials like this and more uh, more content of this variety. I've, I'm doing a lot of experimenting with this uh, NPR anime style rendering. So as I find more stuff and create uh, different workflows and techniques, I will be sharing those through this channel. And uh, another way to support the channel is to uh, go to my newly created Patreon page. On there, I have a tier for uh, demo file access for not just this tutorial, but all future tutorials. And it's still a work in progress on that. I'm still trying to think of different tiers and things that I can add to that. And if you have any, any suggestions for the Patreon page or for this channel for different like uh, tutorials that you want to see, feel free to uh, let me know and I, if it fits into the work that I'm doing, I will uh, definitely uh, do that and make some videos. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching. Bye.